It's October 25th, 2013. 30 years ago, this is the airfield that the Rangers jumped in on. This is the east end of the airfield, and there's the terminal. The monument is right located there, that half dome shape. afternoon the first plane from the 82nd Airborne landed the Rangers had finally cleared the runway right about here is where we all jumped out and actually I remember us jumping out right around there and going down to the, the ocean to get away from the bullets that were coming our way you could hear the firing and the firing was coming from somewhere over in this direction now, after we got off the plane, only one plane could land at a time, and the C-141 took off, and after it climbed out and got out of the way, we rushed across this airfield, and when the plane took off, you could hear bullets hitting the plane, and we rushed across and started going for this high ground over here, this high ground that I'm about to walk up. broke away from the group. I am the only one here right now. So I'll spin this around and ready to go on my adventure. I've noticed there's other people from the past who've got a security vehicle to take them down to the airfield. So I don't know who that is, but they're doing what I'm doing with a vehicle. Right here, this spit of land is where we held the memorial service for Ritz and Epps before we left. And right there is a little clearing where there's a famous picture of us gathered around a pair of boots with bayonets stuck in the ground with M16s. It's right there. That also means right here is a heck of a lot of weapons that we had to throw over the cliff because we couldn't bring them back. They were captured weapons. That little bay right here is at the very end we all jumped in the water to wash up when we came home and there was about 400 naked guys just swimming in the water right there with bars of soap that we got from care packages from the wives I've noticed there's other people from the past who got a security vehicle to take them down to the airfield so I don't know who that is but they're doing what I'm doing with a vehicle right here this spit of land is where we held the memorial service for Ritz and Epps before we left. And right there is a little clearing where there's a famous picture of us gathered around a pair of boots with bayonets stuck in the ground with M16s. It's right there. That also means right here is a heck of a lot of weapons that we had to throw over the cliff because we couldn't bring them back. They were captured weapons. That little bay right here is at the very end we all jumped in the water to wash up when we came home and there was about 400 naked guys just swimming in the water right there with bars of soap that we got from care packages from the wives as we came up this hill for some reason it seemed so much steeper back then I guess because people were shooting at us but as we came up this hill there was dead goats there was a dead Cuban body it was actually like a little river of blood going down there, but that was mainly from the dead goats and dogs. But the Cubans also added to that river. And we came up on this ridge, and we started walking down this trail. At the end of this trail was an anti-aircraft gun that was abandoned. And to the left and right of that anti-aircraft gun, slightly to the rear, was a couple of dead Grenadians that eventually our guys moved out of the way because they were gonna use the anti-aircraft gun but they found out that it didn't work. Turns out the anti-aircraft gun had already been used by the Rangers and they used it to uh, spray fire down into the compound when a bunch of Cubans were trying to set up a mortar. Right now I'm on Goat Hill. This was the position, I think our first platoon was here. I'm almost sure of it. And this is the Cuban compound this way. If you work your way up this hill, which I'm trying to do without killing myself, and 
this is the view and it went over there to uh, to the company CP which was a white house which I'm trying to find today I remember we didn't have any water some of the first water I got were rain barrels from these houses right here because we had two canteens and we pretty much had all drank it all before we got here water was a real problem we had more casualties from heat casualties than bullets the company CP was over there and Captain Jacoby grabbed me and said let's go check on first platoon and we walked down this trail now this trail was just a little dirt trail it wasn't the road it is now and we went that way to the first platoon CP and when we went there got there got some water and then we came back and when we came back these bushes are pretty much the same they have not changed look how close these bushes are to the road there was a couple Cubans in there and there was there was at least four of us walking back down this trail Captain Jacoby myself I think Sergeant Singh Bush too but the Cubans fired that far away full automatic with AK-47s two of them and they fired that close to us we're talking maybe five yards ten yards because they were in the bushes and they fired full automatic and grace of God every single bullet passed between us and none of us were wounded I quickly jumped over here now this wasn't cleared then it was a bunch of thick brush but I jumped over instantly rolled over and fired a full magazine from my M21 which is a 762 millimeter sniper rifle but I fired it as fast as I could in that brush I think the earth-shattering kaboom of that 762 scared the Cubans and they took off running never saw the Cubans at all never saw them run away now later on this same patch of woods uh, during an attack sergeant Bannon was over here and he was wounded when the Cubans were able to get close enough and am and fire from these woods this little patch so this was a dangerous patch of ground between the CP and first platoon this was a killing zone all right 30 years ago the main battle happened in the Calista area. And what this is is a photograph I took right after the main battle happened. This is the battle where Captain Ritz and Epps was killed. Now I'm on the porch. This house is not the original house, but this is a house that was built where the original house was torn down. The Cuban barracks would have been right there, most of the fighting. Bravo Company, where Captain Ritz and Epps were killed, is those two hills right here. And that actually be a low ground in between that hill and that hill. I think that saddle right there is where Ritz was, I mean, uh, Ritz was killed. Over here would have been CSC Company, and the Cubans were located there. Our machine gunners were located right here. Uh, this was a low brick wall right there. And right here is when we caught most of our fire. And this is also where I got my two confirmed kills firing down into the compound. Shortly after we were ambushed, going in between 1st Platoon and the CP, all hell broke loose. After the ambush was quiet, then all hell broke loose. Incredible booming and thundering and everything else. And I ran to the sound of the fighting. Now that's the CP, the white building right there. And I ran down a dirt trail, which is now a cement road, but ran all the way here to the end of the ridge line and went over the side right there and slid down trying to find out what was the fighting. Spectre gunships were up there firing down there and we didn't know what it was. What it was is three BTR-60s had done a counterattack on the airfield. Alright, well we heard the booming and banging. That's the, the hill over there. I slid down and along the way a Ranger 203 gunner was sitting there and I told him, come on, let's do this. So we both ran to the sound of the fighting. That blue building, which I now know is a school, I didn't know what it was, I thought it was some sort of restaurant. But we went into that building, and the BTR-60s were over here. But what has happened over 30 years is they've dug all this out, and the original road is gone. At least we think. We can't really find where the original road is. But it was this close to the airfield. So the BTR-60s got this close, punched through the perimeter of 1st Battalion, and then the BTR-60 stopped. I think they realized they made a mistake. And when they stopped, everybody fired them. Some laws hit it, and 90 millimeter hit it. I saw law rockets ricocheting up in the sky. Spectre, uh, Spectre hit it. Yep, I've got another Ranger here from uh, uh, First Ranger Battalion. Were you with Abizade's company? He was in Abizade's company. 
What's your name again? Blair Donalds. There you go. And uh, what ha finally happened was, I remember it got hit, and from what I understand, one Ranger sergeant hit it with a 90 and stopped it. Baysmore. Baysmore. And uh, and then what happened was that for some reason the PRA guys got out, and this is how I remember it. Uh, they got out, and it's almost like they forgot they were in a war. And then all of a sudden at the end, we all fired them up and shot them. Killed a handful, the rest ran away. The third BTR saw what happened to the first two, and it backed up. It took off, riding back as fast as it could. Inspector gunship fired around, hit it, and flipped it. It turned it on its side. But all that fight, that was the big fight here at the end of the runway. I'm standing in what was the, formal Cuban, uh, the former Cuban compound. Now the building where I was a sniper was on top of that hill right there. It's about 800 meters away. Most, actually all of the old buildings are gone. And what's left are the new buildings that were built after the invasion. Now this building right here was a low flat one uh, where the Cuban barracks was. And right behind it was the area where the, uh, the Cubans had like a, their headquarters building in a low flat wall. After we hit this, we went up that hill right there, going toward Morn Rouge. I couldn't talk much at the last place because the police there were very paranoid about me taking pictures inside there. So let me explain it a little bit better now. All right, the morning of October 26, Captain Ritz, the leader's recon over there, got found, got ambushed, and was killed. Immediately after, the big battle for this Caliste area happened. Now what happened was, I was up there in that White House, returning fire, and Bravo Company started assaulting from the side over here. We hit this compound with everything, and I started shooting at any targets I had. When I didn't have enough targets, I was directing fire of the M60 machine guns, because I had a scope and they did not. And there was two M60s underneath me, underneath the White House, uh, like 10 feet down on that ledge. Now, what finally ended this battle was... Uh, A7 Corsairs flew in and fired their main guns into the compound, 20 millimeters. Now, we had already hit the compound with mortars and 203 rounds and everything else, but the Cubans would not give up. So finally, 20 millimeter rounds, after that, they decided to give up. Now, when they gave up, some of the Cubans retreated back up this hill. I had the M60 gunners fire in front of them trying to scare them back down, but they would not back down. They actually walked up this hill with a white flag like they're surrendering, but they mainly just didn't want to get shot. And they escaped over this hill right here. Now, we pursued them. Alpha Company was in the lead. Bravo Company came behind us. And Bravo Company is the one that dragged the dead bodies out of the Cuban barracks and lined them up as we worked our way up this hill. Now, we went up this hill with 150-pound rucksacks, and I stopped at that tree right there. It was a little tree then. Now it's a big old bush. And I stopped right here because this was kicking my butt. My heart was about ready to explode. Now here it is 30 years later. I don't have a rucksack, but my heart was still ready to explode, so I stopped at the same bush. Now I'm ready to work to the top and go over the top and head our way to Grand Anse. We pursued the Cubans over the top of this hill and headed toward Grand Anse. across this ridge and the night of the second day we stayed right there. Now I was about halfway down that hill as an OP and it was almost impossible to try to get some sleep those three of us because I kept rolling down the hill it was too steep. So what I did was I jammed my random knife into the dirt and leaned against it and used that to try to get some sleep. However it was sleep was hard and coming. What we had all night was there was an attack down here is a movie theater, a drive-in movie theater. And all night long, uh, they did the, uh, there was uh, tracers flying out there, and, and it was flames and smoke, and Spectre gunship fired right over our heads every single time, firing into it. And when Spectre fired, we heard the round going overhead, the impact of the explosion, and then Spectre firing. It was an odd sound. It was like, whoosh, bam, bing, whoosh, bam, bing, all night long. I shouldn't say all night, but quite a bit. Meanwhile, on the other side of this ridge is the Grand Anse campus. The reason we were on this ridge is the next day we would come down and support the Rangers rescuing students down there on Grand Anse Beach. All right, we're looking down in the Grand Anse Beach right now. 
Now, Grand Ants, there was a medical school down there, and it's still there. In fact, you see the little white shacks right there. That is the medical school. What happened was rangers came in with uh, helicopters and landed on and around that beach. At that time, there was a hotel there called the uh, Holiday Inn. It wasn't like the Holiday Inn. It was just a Holiday Inn. Now, uh, what happened was the rangers got almost everybody out, but one of the ranger helicopters hit one of these pine trees right there and was broken. So what the rangers did was they shot it up, and then the rangers could not go back with the main element because there wasn't enough room for the medical students and them. So they got out in the water and went out and uh, basically went out to a ship and was rescued. What we did was we came out of this hill down into this valley and right down that road to the end of that intersection. And right there, the intersection was where a Bravo Company soldier was shot. And there's a famous photograph of the medics working on them. And down there was a bunch of red uh, roofed little bungalows. I think it was the dormitory for the college at the time. And we landed a Black Hawk helicopter down there and medevaced that soldier out. Now the irony of all this is we're on top of Morn Rouge overlooking where we were. And I'm <laughs> right now, what this place is, it's a paintball field. So in other words, a place where we fought for real somebody turned it into a paintball field and they've got like little things you can move through and fight your way with paintballs this is a much better view of Grand Ants Beach first off where I'm staying is where that concrete jetty is going out in the water but where the uh, Ranger helicopter went down is about halfway down you see some palm trees and the rotor blades hit that palm tree and broke it and it had to stay right there in the surf All right, this is the view from Mount Cinnamon Hotel. Uh, back in 1983, about the third day of the invasion, we had spent the night up there, a mountain called Morn Rouge. The next day, we had to support an attack down here. Rangers were rescuing students from this beach located right here. Now what we did was we came out of the mountain and came down here. Now one ranger helicopter hit a palm tree located right about there and it could no longer fly. So what the rangers did was they fired up that helicopter. They shot it so no nobody could use it anymore. They got the students out with the helicopters that were there, but the, unfortunately the one ranger squad didn't have enough room. So what they had to do was they had to get out in the water and worked their way back to the uh, friendly lines by going all the way around the point. Now at the end of this, there were, uh, these used to be bungalows, uh, a bunch of little buildings with orange roofs. And at the end of this road, uh, we had a fight. There was a uh, uh, like a Holiday Inn travel office down there. And one of, uh, a guy from B Company was wounded. And he's the famous picture of the guy shot through the neck with the medics working on him. Meanwhile, about that time, my company, A Company, is working their way up the road. And we're working our way that way towards St. George's Harbor. And St. George's Harbor is not there. It continues on. All right, about day six of the invasion... We did an air mobile up here to Grand Lake Atang. They call it Grand Atang. Anyway, what we did, we came up here because we heard there was a Cuban training base up here. And this is what it looks like now. Uh, it's turned into a national park. Now, there wasn't any combat up here. We just searched the lake, and then we started working our way down the hill. And we worked our way down for the next two days. And what happened was we slowly went through the villages. We found a BTR-60. And drove it. Some guys drove it back to the airfield, and eventually we got word that the mission was over. And we're going home, so we flew out of a local village soccer field back down to the airfield. But this is one of the last locations. And what this is, this is an old volcano, and the lake is the hole in the volcano, the, the where the lava came out. And it's now a national preserve. And this picture. You can see that it was uh, very cleared off back then, I guess, for people using the 
woods for firewood and everything else. But what has happened, I actually can't stand in this plot, spot because if I did, you wouldn't be able to see the lake because the government has allowed the forest to go back to being a rainforest. So it has reclaimed all that open area that you see in this picture. And this is my final day on the island. After this, we fly out tomorrow. <laughs>